interface with the computer in three different ways. One way is just with a handheld remote. This here, I can I can speed up time, slow it down, stop, um, turn different uh, different things on like here. Oh, let me turn that off. Doesn't work when I hit that. I'm still learning. So this turns on. This is all of the, the deep sky objects that are in the sky. It kind of highlights them. I'm going to just fast forward a bit so that we're in the night sky. So as the sun sets and the stars come out. Okay, this is a cool bedroom. <laughs> 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 this is beautiful. Yes. What is it here that's so behind me? And this is supposed to be a back foot. Um, <laughs> this is very this is 10 okay. okay. So I can turn on, there's stars, stars. Well, there you go. And the planets, so it shows the planets there, the moon. And that is. That shows the deep sky objects that are there. And they, they just um, updated the database on this now. I just did a, uh, I, I can update it uh, over the internet. So it has, it has new releases to the software come. I can just look it up to the internet and download the updates. Really? Um, let's see. Yeah, that one. There's the constellation line work. Where's Polaris? And here's the names. Polaris is right up there. I do see it, yeah. yeah. And well, I'm just still using the handheld. And this is the artwork that comes with it. Now there's artwork for um, a couple of dozen cultures. This just happens to be the one, the default, which is the modern um, depiction of the constellations. And this is just the altitude angle, so we you set know, the horizon at north 10 degrees, 20, all the way up to 90, and back down to the south. Just shows the, the, the meridian line if you're looking south. Did you put the orientation as as real as as outside is, or does it matter? Like yeah. west west looks over there, right? Is that really west oh, from here? Yeah, no, I, I, it doesn't matter, right? That's accidental. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Normally, I'm really fussy about stuff like that, but not that. Okay. Um, this just shows uh, the uh, alert. Celestial uh, grid, if you will, by extension of that location. Can you adjust the magnitude of the stars that you wanted to display? Um, I, yes, I think I can. Okay, I see it now. Is there, is there some different part? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, so this is a simulation of being out in a, in a really dark site. Yeah. Place where so how many, how many times have you been out in the canister when it's a star left and 3,000 stars? How many stars are we seeing here? Uh, there's probably a few thousand. Okay. Yeah. How much way I see that they are. So you got the Illuminati and then the second star. So it makes it sharp, right? It makes it a little trickier. Yes. So it magnitudes. Ah, well, uh, here's the, here's the Polaris. Okay. Uh, this is the second magnitude star. Oh, yeah. That's a third magnitude star. Yeah. That's a fourth magnitude star. Yeah, okay. And that one has to look at it. So I would say it's going down to six magnitudes. They have these magnifications. Right. So it is there. So that's accurate. Yeah. And then show me where it connects to the OS. Okay. It's just right on the piano. Yep. Yeah. But like I said, for some reason I, I have I'm it's starting to come, I'm starting to 
stars in the database as well, like uh, Alpha Dracomas, the band. And I love how they got the colors of the stars uh, accurate as well. Yeah. So that just gives you just a quick down of the, of the constellations. And let's see here, I like the, I kind of prefer the Arab renditions, the artwork associated with Is that an add-on or is it already in the machine? It's, it's part of the yeah, it's part of the program. So here is the dragon. We'll look at the artwork. So this is the artwork there, which I think looks a lot nicer than that. The other one looks kind of cartoonish. And these here, let me turn off the planets. I haven't gotten used to yet is this uh, tank wheel. So this lists all of the Arab constellations. And if I can, uh, I can show them all. So did, did any of the Arab constellations? Obviously, we get star names. Right? Yes, a lot of the star names are yeah. right. Yeah, but not not constellations. Yeah, well, there's there's, there's, some? there's there. I mean, with Draco, they, they okay. also saw Draco okay. as a dragon as okay. well. So there's some overlap. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I mean, I'm looking at. Yeah, I haven't even explored a lot of these. Uh, I, I looked at the Inuit constellations. Uh, what? Uh, what? Some of those are color. Yeah. So there's one here, Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia, the Inuit saw, is a, a water container. <laughs> a what? A water? Oh, yeah. I see it now, yeah. Water a container. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I found water. And maybe it was used to as a okay. uh, light. They have caribou, which is the big river. So not a bear, but a caribou. Well, you can only name things what you know exist in real life, right? That's true. Yeah, that's true. Sure. So they don't have a dragon. Of course. How about a normal? <laughs> well, that's close enough. They have... No. Uh, Maybe they have some in here. <laughs> Breastbone, collarbone, they have dogs, wingspan, runners, one behind, one behind. Could you buy this unit in Australia? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'd like to see that. So the database, they have a database no. for the South as well? Probably, maybe, hopefully. Ideally, it'd be all one day. Why not? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's you should be able to see where you want to look. look right? yeah. so, okay, so, so those are the constellations. Where this unit really shines is uh, one of the planets. So, like I said, there's, this interface is like the remote. There's another interface, which is this this one here. This is a Xbox controller. Mm -hmm. It allows me to really navigate around planets. And the other one here that I've been using is called the Universal.
universal consoles is that it's a an app that runs and it just allows me to enable it a little easier. It's a little less intrusive than the internet through menu. But uh, so let's have a look at some planets. So we're gonna fly to the planet Mercury. Yay. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna turn on my Xbox. I see it down there. Have you ever gotten uh, motion sickness? No, no one's ever. A few people have sort of said, well, they've gotten dizzy, and I, I, I usually warn people to, they get dizzy, just kind of look away, don't look down, mm -hmm. and I'll let them know when we're, when we're done. Mm -hmm. But most people are usually doing it. What gets people is if the star field moves, moves quickly. Yeah. That usually. So when we have this for all the plants? Yeah, so I have the high resolution imagery 
for Mercury, the Moon, Mars, and Europa. And standard imagery for one of them. So when you say standard, that, would you still visual? What's yeah. the difference between the standard and the enhanced? Yeah. Well, the enhanced talks to you really, so we have a bucket crater instead of only a few kilometers away. Oh, it's just so much bigger. So Venus, we're flying to Venus. Venus is just regular, yeah. And, and right now, uh, we don't have a lot of coverage of Venus. Um, so we're just kind of looking at the cloud tops. But I'm hoping someday they, they get imagery, or radar imagery, that will allow us to see the surface of Venus. It's still pretty cool. So that's cool. So that's, that's Venus. That's kind of what it looks like. Well, this is Venus? No. Yeah, that's Venus. Venus. Yeah. It's like a Milky Way in there. Oh, so we're flying around behind us now. And this is way better than I thought it was going to be. You all went that Yeah. You had to build a second home for it, no second floor. This would be the coolest oh, bedroom on the planet. Yeah, it's easy. I can probably get better at it, but I only set it up every month or so. So that's the standard imagery as opposed to the high yeah. depth? This is just the, this is a regular image. You know, I mean, it's, not really, oh. it's not high definition. It's uh, all we're seeing on the cloud is regular. So when you zoom in, you don't really see that much. Oh. So do you think it's deflated if you're not using, say, it's out between shells or something like that? Well, it is. Yep. So it can't rest on this projector, obviously, that would be bad. shows one they one about the solar system okay. and uh, I like to um, show images of even the earth and the moon uh, and even though the other objects in the solar system are, are amazing uh, the earth is the only one that can support life uh, so I, I usually I like to put a little discussion on, on the earth that there's like no other place comes to close to being able to, you know, to be habitable like the Earth is. I think Mars has, you know, Mars has an atmosphere, and it seems like you know, we can land on it, but there's, like, there's no air, there's no water, it's, it's, it's pretty hostile uh, to life. And I kind of, I like to kind of make sure that that message gets through, you know, kind of get people to take care of the planet they're on. And, and one way to do that is, you know, just to see the Earth I like coming in nice and close. These are satellite images of the Earth. And uh, there is additional imagery that comes with uh, the system. I, I didn't get it because it, it, I can zoom in on certain landforms. And uh, I wasn't sure I was going to do that. If I decide I want to, I can always get it. And then it always is like that. Yeah, they, they pull all of that into each other and make it very good, right? Yeah. But uh, I, I like to, like you said, what the five things. I like to explain, you know, what planet is, the star is, how far away things are, oh. the different units of measure. It depends on the audience, too. Mm -hmm. um, I have, well, a challenge I have is that I can have an audience that's from age of four to age of three. Right. And I have to have, I have to be able to keep it at Level. Sometimes I may go a little beyond what the young kids, but I try to at least include something. But there's always something moving and, uh, and going on up there that seems to help. So, right now, I'm in a spacecraft 1,700 mile, kilometers away, right? Yes. Yeah, that's our distance from Earth. All right, in our present position in space. Right. So, we're flying over the meridian and so So, it. Uh, yeah. That might be the moon. I think that's the moon. And can you dial into 450 kilometers? Because that would be approximately the space station's uh, altitude above Earth. Yeah. And they can see what they see. So, and there's, there's Spain. There you go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you won't be drunk. <laughs> You can't keep up with yeah. it. <laughs> See what they thought the view would be like. Show with all our questions. 
and, and, and does it come with labels of critters or even like where no, the words are or something like that? I have that? to learn that. <laughs> well, so it, it, it's potential is there, right? Yeah. So I have, I have. But well, that's good. It's like me. I get, I get familiar with the with the Martian surface, uh, and I know that if I go in, around this feature is where the is, which is big on the top. So there's the Dallas Mariner system. Oops. So right now on Mars, it's um, the sun is close to the horizon. Right now in this depiction, not in actuality. So right now, as it's June the 13th. Right. Okay. And I've spent ahead again to you know, 11 o'clock. I uh, see. So it's as near real time as you, if you want it to. Yeah. Right. So if I want to change that and get it, look at it in daylight, all I have to do is just move, move change the time, push the button, make it six hours later or whatever. And so and so where would the poles be? Like the north and south pole? It is, it is, I can't understand. So, so I'm making, I'm kind of speeding up time so that Mars is rotating. So this is actually, uh, this is Mars rotating for us. That's pretty cool. There's kind of nothing, isn't there? <laughs> like, I thought there'd be more craters on there. But I guess they're just in the There's quite a few there. Well, there are quite a few, but nothing well, like the north. <coughs> the northern hemisphere of Mars has very few craters because it's, it's believed it was actually washed out right. of yeah. water body, right. which, which covered or that sort of thing. Right. Anyway, just so we don't spend too much time on this. Uh, uh, this, uh, this do you know if the, the Mars moons, right? Are they always are they always near each other or do they they go thousands of apart thousands of kilometers apart? Uh, Phobos is in a much lower orbit. Oh okay. It's, it actually if you were to stand on Mars and look at Phobos, you could actually see it moving across uh, the sky. Because every time I see the two uh, moons of Mars, they're always together. But, oh, yeah. You, yeah, you know what I mean, right? <coughs> now, that's really cool. So this is Saturn, and I always love to talk about the rings of Saturn. So the rings of Saturn, even though if, if you stretch them out, they they all <coughs> span the distance from the Earth to the moon. Like, they're huge. They're really big. But they're incredibly thin. They're as thin as a three-story building. Ten meters thick. That's all they have. <coughs> right. So here did the moon like two hundred fifty thousand kilometers, and they almost disappeared. Yeah. Wow. So that's Mars from. I'm uh, sorry, Jupiter from uh, Saturn. Saturn from uh, three hundred twenty-three thousand kilometers. And one thing I sometimes do is when I look at the planets, I look at them all from the same distance. I say, okay, let's look at Mercury from twenty thousand kilometers, and Venus from the same distance, and then they can see when they go, wow, look how big. You know, so 20,000 kilometers away from the Earth, that's about how big the Earth looks. But when you get in 20,000 kilometers from Saturn, or right along the plane of the rings here, so there it is. Well, that's about it. Well, Saturn is so much bigger. I think it's kind of cool flying along the surface of the rings. So, anyway, this is the first planet I viewed through a telescope when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally ran across the street and rang the doorbell on my neighbor's <laughs> house. And I didn't realize that it was like 2 in the morning. <laughs> right? All the lights on, I'm ringing the doorbell. Right. And then the light comes on, and I'm like, what the hell do you want? Right. You gotta see Saturn. I'm not. Go, go home. Go home. So that's when you were thirty-one or something. Thirty-two. And that's how I got my first journey. Or. That's hilarious. But I can see you're excited. I was really excited. Yeah, yeah. It was just a little two-inch refractor, you know, that little sixty-millimeter telescope. But it was just like I couldn't believe I could see the rings. Away. If I'm out somewhere and uh, I see the International Space Station, I point it out to anybody that's around me, and they love it. 
They don't yeah. look at it. I've never seen it before, right? Yeah. And there's some of the moons in the Saturn system. I can look in. So, I mean, even just a quick, quick fly. I don't know where we are. It's the, the mythological wife of Saturn. Yeah, and there's to me, it looks like it's the whole golf ball in space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, again, standard imagery. Probably a lot of it came back from the Norwegian missions. And later missions. Uh, there have been a lot of missions to Saturn. Like C, so it's one of those things. And the two voyages are the five. It's so incredibly boring compared to Earth, isn't it? What? Earth is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, Earth is. That's what I say. There's really nothing there. If I was an alien, I'd be zooming in on Earth. Wow. What's interesting is Europa. Europa is interesting. Yeah. Or interesting. But it depends on what kind of wavelength that they see them. So, okay. So, now what I'd like to do is... Um, so, all the, all of the planetariums they sell come with the ability to fly through the solar system. Sure. Did you um, say that Titan was a high, high depth? No. Um, Europa, Europa, the moon of uh, Jupiter. So okay, so yeah, they all include the planets, but you you got more stuff. Right? Yeah, and these smudges up here would that be like a drama or something like that, or like different galaxies? Um, there are some smudgy spots up there. I, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to see it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Europa. Europa. So this has, there's high definition uh, imagery for Europa. There you but it's so flat. I think that about eight to 100 meters is the, the relief on this planet. Mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. It's a great big ice ball. So here we have a little more high definition. This is standard? This is high definition? This is the standard This is a, this is, they have partial high def for it. So here's a, here's a region of, of Europa where they've got some zoom in on it and look at the fracture. It's a it's it's water ice on the surface with lots of fractures in it. And there's no craters. Is this the one that's supposed to have a big lake underneath the ice? Yeah, it's got a, an ocean. Actually uh, Europa ocean, is yeah. slightly smaller than the Earth's moon, but it has twice as much water as the Earth. Wow. Twice as much water on Europa? Yeah. There's a huge, like, hundreds of kilometers thick ocean um, in Europe. It's, it's not a phenomenal amount of water. What type of instrument would you use to measure that? Is it spectroscopy? Yeah, I mean, this is again, it's, it, I think it's more than that. But I know the surface is water ice. So the spectrograph would tell you. <laughs> but what's underneath is <laughs> part of the yeah. you know, knowledge of geophysics yeah. and yeah. 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 Um, there's a book that you can do a sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's on here, this space is, yeah, it's, it's an instructor, instructor led program, and there's 12. Sure, and he's got to put his own Yes. And, uh, I haven't done one yet. Now? But I, I just go through it, and if I want to show a little so movie or something, I hit that, and it just shows I didn't know like that. There's a little script I there. hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I know. They range in like 45 minutes. Yeah, I think the comfortable number of adults is around 22, 23. They say 25, but it's a little bit. So 23 is probably for adults. Which one in the original movie? The original movie. I think it was a lot yesterday. Yeah. 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 Yeah
look at it, it's like it kind of looks kind of close to the approximation of what the galaxy looked like. And uh, it was a painstaking effort. It was long before computers or photography, he did it all by mind. So he was a phenomenal what he was able to do with just his eyes. And the instruments that he built, he was an amazing builder of the telescopes as well. Another question. You know how we have the, the, um, the Earth to our sun it has the, the Goldilocks zone? Is there a Goldilocks zone from the center of the uh, galaxy uh, to where planets could should have life? Because, That's an interesting question. Because of the gravity and the heat, uh, because the stars are, are so much closer. Yeah. 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 I, think, um, I think at one time it was believed, yeah. it's, it, it's known that um, the gal when the galaxy rotates, yes. they, they thought that these stars out here would rotate a lot more slowly right. than the stars here, right. but they don't. Yeah. It's at the same spin rate, right? And so they realized that, well, they, they said, well, why would they? they? This is all the mass of the galaxies in here. That was the assumption back in the day. Right? They thought all, most of the mass was in the, in the center. And so the stars out here that are farthest from the center would, would rotate really fast, just like Pluto. I'm oh, sorry, other way around. Did I say that wrong? They figured the stars out here would rotate very slowly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Just like Pluto in its orbit around the sun, right. it was very slow. It's like six kilometers right. a second compared to the Earth's 30 kilometers a second. So, and as we get closer to the sun, Mercury goes even faster still, really fast. So that, when they kind of looked at the galaxy, they thought, well, it must be the same way, right? This is before they knew anything about dark matter. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the ways it was discovered, because when they started measuring these, these speeds of these stars, they realized they were going at almost the, the same speed as the stars yeah. here. Right. And they kind of, the only way that could happen the way that dark energy. is if there's a lot of other matter out here that can't be seen. One of the indirect ways that they discovered that there's more mass to the Milky Way than meets the eye. Wow. I thought that was cool reading about that. Yeah. So, so to answer my question, you just don't know in a sense? Or so, that yeah, it question? was thought that this area here close to the core was, was fairly dangerous. There's a lot more supernovae right. there. Yeah. Um, it's, that's what the belief is, but They've never made predictions of how long before. <laughs> so, so let's use this analogy, what we have right now, right? And we'll say that the drone is sitting right up here, and we're looking up. Would the spin rates, are they the same? Yeah. Like, are galaxies spinning at the same rate, or the same direction overall? Oh, throughout okay. the, uh, like, no, no, no. Like, like a phonograph? Well, our, our sun takes well, 200 we have an angular momentum, momentum right? Like, and everything that's in the uh, Milky Way, it's not a, it has laws to, to and so if it's not spinning, it will spin or it will, it'll fall apart, is what I'm wondering, wondering. And then you don't know the answer to that either? Because you don't work at JPL? <laughs> <laughs> JPL hasn't been that far. All I know is that they, they thought that we're kind of in a, as they call, an habitable zone in the galaxy, so we're okay. far enough away from the core. And there was also some concern that being close to the dark matter might, might be hazardous, but I think recently there was a publication saying that they don't the case, so it's hard to say. The thing is, uh, I don't think, that one thing that's really hard to, to get my head around, and anyone to get their head around, is just how phenomenally <laughs> far away everything is. It's, like, it's, it's just yeah. baffling thing far away. That's it really what's is. really nice about this, is you can wrap your head around yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. It's like, like if, if, if a beam of light would flash, go from here over to here, it would take 100,000 years. Yeah, and we're 25,000 miles or uh, light years from the center. So, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's about the. Yeah. And that makes sense because like the other edge is like 50 uh, or another 25. Yeah, so that is amazing. But it's a pretty cool rendition of it. You can see the. Star clouds, the blue stars that are in spiral arms, and not the old, the old stars that are in the core. But I like that picture. I like being able to do that. And I love coming home. But I say, 
Very strong. Usually I have some nice music for the camera or something, so I use the light of the stereo. I love this. I like that it's accurate too. So here we are. We are. Are we at yet? We, yeah, let me back up a little bit just to give you an idea of how bright the sun is at various distances. Okay. So I'm going to move out to about. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, here's a distance of 20 light years. So that's what our sun would look like at a distance of 20 light years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's bright. It might be maybe second second magnitude, maybe third at that distance. Just looks like a normal main sequence star. Yeah, it just looks like a yeah. It's like it's so it's it's not not a brilliant star. And and when you get out to like a hundred light years, it just disappears, like it's gone. And so it's 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 the reason why. The reason why uh, alien life hasn't come to say hello is because they can't find us. <laughs> they have no idea where we are. We're we just one of them. A zillion stars. But and this is still our own galaxy. Yes. And, and that's the, when you talk about the size of the universe, we're only in our own galaxy. Yeah. So here's, we're at a distance of about six, 70 light years. So there it's just starting to probably around 6 or 50 magnitude, and that's at 70 light years, which isn't really that far. 70 light years is just a, just a scratch, yeah. because we're 100,000 across. So it's like, uh, if the Milky Way was the size of North America, it's like we're, we're kind of still close to wealth. So we, we're still close to home. You know what, you say it, it, it's like how big it is, but it, it's just so cool that our tiny, tiny, tiny little brains can help them in this. But uh, even though that's the case, I, I still, every time I end a show, I like to uh, mention something about the Earth. And I always, you know, Carl Sagan was one of my uh, cool, like, favorite. Astronomers feel who done. And we're, are, are we at Pluto? So that's, no, we're coming into the Earth again. So whenever I end, I always say, you know, I leave it at here, at the Earth, and say that even though we've, you know, there's all these amazing things out there, everything that's ever happened, everything that's ever happened or anything we've ever known has you know, happened on, yeah. on that diet. Everything in history. You should actually record that because it's on YouTube and it is brilliant. Yeah. Everybody you've ever known. Everybody you've ever known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's well on there. There it is. He said he had to fight like hell to get the, uh, the, the project managers of Voyager to take a peek backwards at the, at the sun. Yeah, I remember that. So, uh, thank you. Wow. Yeah, that's good. And then the lady that was looking in the forehead, she was wondering what was And then she was like, that's a bird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a bird. Mm -hmm. That's a bird. Um, I, I, went to, I went to a school in Waterloo. Um, you had to just get connected with just a cold call? People do the, do the restaurant any time. That's why I, I'm hoping at some point to have people from the board come in and have a look at it. And just get the word out.
for science. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Five billion plus. Billions of billions. Yeah. Yeah. The initial contact will be it's like a tail galaxy. What amazes me, what amazes me is the is the animation they have of stars near the galactic core. Yeah. They're showing them rotating around an invisible object, which is a black hole. Yeah. It's just amazing to me that we can we can actually okay. see something like that. Yeah. You know, in, in our in not only in our lifetimes, only a few years. You know, we see yeah. that kind of thing. So and this stuff's a simul that was a simulation over uh, millions of years, yeah. mil or at least millions of years. But but this is something that is happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah, in the space of 10 to 20 years. Right. It's back to Earth. Yeah, back up time. So, when it's complete, the amalgamation of the two galaxies, right? The uh, the, uh, the galactic center is going to have the black holes that will combine. It's going to be pretty much hard. It's an epic classroom. So, George, what are you taking pictures for tonight? Oh, I took a.